Hello everyone and welcome to this installment of Drama Mama Investigates. Today we are we, we are going to be looking into the sordid saga of the DC extended universe. Now, you might think, my goodness, that's very strange of you. It's very strange of you to be looking into something like that. Don't you usually do politics? Well, yes, I do. I often do politics, but I also love to talk about media. And as it turns out, the DC Extended Universe has a whole lot of politics going on in it. Oh my God, is there a lot of stuff going on in the DC Extended Universe right now. And as it turns out, a lot of this is coming to a head right now. As in, right when I'm recording this. Yeah? So, before I get started, I just want to tell you all, welcome to my channel. My name is Demon Mama. I'm a political edutainer, and I'm hitting the road running this year. So if you would be able to give me a subscribe, a ring the bell, and a like on this video, I would love it. It would mean the world to me. And that means you can check out all of my future stuff, which is really cool because I do a lot of really cool content. Amazing, right? All right, there's the plug. And without any further ado, Let's begin to talk about this whole thing. So some of you may be familiar with a uh, film called The Justice League. Does anybody know about The Justice League? The Justice League was a DC film starring, you know, Superman and Batman and Aquaman and Wonder Woman and all of the big all of the really really big uh, DC characters in one big movie. And it had a really, really bad launch, actually. It was one of the most hyped movies you could imagine, um, like to the degree that the entire internet has been obsessed with it for a very long time, even though the original film came out um, in, in 2017, November of 2017, so a long time ago now. And it failed. The movie bombed. It bombed really, really hard. Um, and in the, in the following years, the, uh, there was a lot, there's been a lot of, um, drama around it, actually. They came out the same month. R uh, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thor Ragnarok, a spinoff film, a really good spinoff film, by the way. Thor Ragnarok is my favorite of the, um, of the Marvel, uh, universe films. I love Thor Ragnarok. Really good movie. Um, and also very different stylistically. Uh, the Justice League went for a very grim, dark, um, edgy, uh, gritty, uh, scary monster, ooh, dark, uh, modern um, style, where Marvel's Thor Ragnarok went the totally opposite direction. Like, totally opposite direction. That movie was, like, colorful and wild. It had a super flamboyant Jeff Goldblum in it. Um, really, really wild. Um, and, of course... Ragnarok, a spinoff, outperformed by a by a pretty decent amount the Justice League movie, which was a flagship DC release. Now, this might not. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, it was really great. Four hundred four. Um, yeah, I, I I loved it. Yeah, let me just show you an example of this. I want to show you some of the like an image from this movie that should uh, give you an idea of how different the styles are. Let me show you what the main villain from from the DC, uh, the the DC film looked like versus, um, or rather, this is what the current villain of the DC universe looks like versus the villain in Ragnarok. I'll just give you a look real quick. I just want to have this available for you here, um, so I can show you the sort of difference in style that we're talking about. This right here is Jeff Goldblum's character in Thor Ragnarok, okay? You see this? See the like color and how wild and goofy and he's got the eyeliner, all this shit? This is the villain in the DC universe. This is like, yeah. So you can kind of see what is going on here. This is a minor, like this is like the big bad of a spinoff film. This is the main villain of the DC universe, okay? 
Yeah. So you can see why, uh, you know, it might not have been received as as well. Um, and and since that time, there has been a lot of um, yeah, spiky Thanos. But he doesn't even look as good as Thanos. Like here, let me show you. Let me show you. I know that we're uh, I know that we're kind of taking a little bit of a side thing here, but like let's take a look at Thanos and just compare. You know, and I know it's not always completely fair to, um, you know, to compare between different films of different styles and blah, blah, blah. But but just take a look at this. This is Thanos, the big bad from the Marvel uni universe. As you can see, he looks a little silly, he looks a little funny, uh, but still, nonetheless, a very distinct character. Looks like the actor. You can identify who the actor is. He's got cool design. He's colorful. He does seem like a real character. You know, some people think he looks a little silly with this goofy chin, but nonetheless, you know, yeah, he, he's kind of thick, though. Yeah, he does have that, uh, you know, the twerking Thanos going on. Yeah, this guy looks more imposing. He looks more real. This could, looks like a guy that you would be like, oh, shit, this is a character I can get behind. Yeah? Yeah. So it's kind of cool, you know? Um, the other guy just kind of looks like a generic guy. Now, by the way, just so we're all on the same page, uh, let me show you the original design of, of Steppenwolf, okay? That's the name of the villain. Watch this. Let me show you. In the original comic, this is what he looked like, okay? Ready? Look, this is what Steppenwolf looked like in the original comic. Yeah, we're talking DC right now. That's the drama today, Grime Dango. That's the drama. We got it. Look at this guy. See? This is the OG Steppenwolf. He's got little badges on him. He's got a devil face on there. Big red sword spear. He looks, he's got like an Ares thing going on. Yeah, it's a little edgy generic, but you can imagine how this would do much better on a, on a, on a scene, right? Like, like if this was in a movie, you'd be like, whoa, this would be cool. You could be like, maybe he's not your favorite villain ever, but you'd be like, hey, this guy's kind of cool. You know, he's got some Ares shit going on. Yeah. Yeah, the demon cod piece is kind of cool. The badges are kind of cool. The horns are nice. He's got a giant axe and a flaming sword spear. Yeah, he's got some... Yeah, exactly. Lincoln Park. Yeah, exactly. There we go. We're on to this. So, yeah. Uh, again, a lot of weird stylistic decisions. And um, what ended up... So, But, but there's a lot of stuff going on um, in the background of these films. And uh, one of the things that you'll notice um, about modern filmmaking, and especially with cinematic universes, is that they are, and this is not, I know, you're a lefty streamer going to talk about capitalism being bad? True! Yeah, I am going to talk about it. These movies are hyper-produced. Millions upon millions upon millions of dollars being dumped into it with a, an unbelievable amount of executives all trying to make a product that will make the most money you can possibly imagine. Not just some money, all the money. And this leads to what some people were, um, you know, what some people call, uh, you know, committee designed or committee directed movies, um, committee written movies, where there's so much corporate oversight into the movie that you can never get a cohesive film out of it. And instead, you just get a bunch of pieces that focus groups react good to. Now some, and of course, this tends to generate a lot of hype because of course, those pieces are being laser pointed at certain audiences that will appreciate it, but then when they come and see the movie, none of them really get what they want. All those little focus groups that they've been focus grouping have been saying, oh, we'd like this, and there's their little five minutes and whatnot. There's a whole bunch of, this is really, really complicated stuff, okay? So, while this movie, while this Justice League movie was being made, AT&T and Time Warner, two massive, massive media and telecommunication companies in this country, were considering a merger. Now, that comes into play with what we're going to be really talking about today. They are massive companies, okay? We're talking uh, the amount of money that you can't even imagine is on the line here, okay? And something to consider about these sorts of things that I want you to keep in the back of your mind for all of this conversation is that when mergers and buyouts happen, um, people who own stock in another corporation or in the corporation that's being bought out are in a position to potentially make a lot of money. Consider it like this. Say you own 
um, a share, like say you're a, uh, let's say you're a producer for DC, right? Which is part of Mar, which is a part of Warner Brothers, and you have ownership of some of those shares as a part of your benefits package for working at that company, which is something that happens to people who are on the higher end of these companies. You will own shares of that company. If that company gets bought out for billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars, you get a share of that. You get a slice of those hundreds of millions of dollars. So you can imagine just how much incentive is on the line to try and get the most money that you could possibly get out of every single interaction, every single film, right? Yeah, it's the stonks meme. It's the stonks meme. You know, line go up. This is a b big line go up. Line go up, biggie. Biggie line go up. But as it turns out, you know, art is a little bit harder to uh, optimize and perfect than something like, I don't know, McDonald's, you know? You know, with McDonald's, you get your little menu, and there's plenty of complications with McDonald's, but you basically get an idea. People like a salty cheeseburger that looks a certain way, that comes with fries, and comes with a shake, or whatever, or a drink, or a soda. But with movies, it's really hard to tell exactly what comics fans would want, or if you're even trying to make the movie for comics fans at all, right? Like, what if you don't care about comics fans? What if there's only 100,000 comic fans, but there's 10 million people who will go, whoa, Superman's kind of cool, let's go see that movie this weekend. See where we're going with this? It gets pretty complicated. So the Justice League movie was a giant flop. And part of the drama that was involved in this flop, people like pig slop? Some do, yeah. <laughs> Cheeseburger, yeah. But a, a part of this, part of the drama that was involved specifically with the Justice League involved, yeah, we're about, yeah, you, you got it. We're getting into the Snyder Cut, okay? Was a, a completely unbelievable amount of changes to the staff involved. So, Early on, well, not super early on, but uh, uh, after about, I think it was somewhere in the ballpark of like 90% of the initial shooting of the DC, uh, you know, uh, Justice League film, somewhere in the ballpark of that, um, Warner decided, oh shit, this, this movie is not going to do well. We need to make it better we need to make it the, the the focus groups are saying we need it to be more hopeful more optimistic more stylistic this is too dirty and so they hire on two new people and these people are important to understand okay john berg actually three people i should say uh john berg jeff johns and joss whedon now you might not know the first two names but you probably know the third name joss whedon Am I missing one point? Oh, feel free to drop drop it if I'm over if I'm brushing over it. Yes, we will talk about that. We will talk about that. Yes, yes. But that's not immediately important. So they were already in post production. Yes, this is the whole thing. Now some of this is unknown because we don't know everything that's underneath um the the um you know, underneath the hood. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of the movie had already been made by Zack Snyder. Now, for one reason or another, um, yeah, yeah, Dan Olson has a video on this, but we'll talk, we're, we're gonna, we're, this part, just bear with me, bear with me, okay? So, in March of 2017, now remember, the film came out in, no, in November of 2017. So in March 2017, a, a tragedy struck Zack Snyder's family. No matter what you think of Zack Schneider, it's really fucking sad what happened to him, okay? His daughter passed away. Um, it was very tragic for him. And he stepped out of the entire process. However, it's not really that simple. Because even before that happened, DC had already hired Joss Whedon to help co-direct the film alongside Zack Snyder. Which is kind of strange, because it, that what that would seem to indicate is that there was already some trouble happening 
and we we can we can intuit that this might be the case before this even happened before the tragedy even happened and the tragedy was just too much so Zack snyder left the progress or left the project now keep in mind J joss whedon was hired on in january or february somewhere in that window we don't know for sure of 2017 so early 2017 joss whedon comes on mid 2017 Zack snyder leaves the project completely november 2017 the movie comes out and between this period and this period the middle point and the end point a lot changed a lot let me just read you a quick statement from the time warner uh chief uh executive uh, ch ch coo uh, the coo uh, toby emmerich the directing is minimal and it has to adhere to the style and tone and the template that Zack set. We're not introducing any new characters. It's the same characters in some new scenes. He's handing the baton over to Joss Whedon, but the course has really been set by Zack. I still believe that despite this tragedy, we will still end up with a great movie. They didn't. Did not turn out great. Yep. It did not turn out great at all. Now, for those of you who might know uh, Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon was the creator of a show called Firefly, a critically acclaimed fan favorite sci-fi show. He also wrote the movie Atlantis, the Disney movie Atlantis. He also has worked on a number of Marvel films. So they basically brought, and Buffy, yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, he's been around a while. Um, and Joss Whedon, um, Joss Whedon, yeah, he wrote Atlantis, he did, yeah. Um, Joss Whedon, uh, has, you know, he's been up and down. He's critically acclaimed on a lot of things, but he's also had a couple of pretty big misses. Um, he made the first Avengers movie. Yes, he did. He's been working on all this, but it's kind of strange, you know, to bring the guy from Marvel over to the DC universe in the, in the middle of this big struggle. Kind of weird. You know what I mean? Um, but things got really bad after this. And there's a reason for this, because after the film came out, fans of, of DC Universe were not happy at all. Not happy at all. So, the movie bombed. I mean, not good. And when the movie bombed, people were looking for someone to blame. And something really weird happened, okay? Something really, really weird happened. A petition appeared on the internet uh, that ended up getting almost 200,000 signatures. That's a lot of fans to sign off on, some, on a petition online, even though it's still an online petition and those are silly. And this was claiming, we want the Snyder Cut. They were demanding the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut being what they believed to be the real version of the film that Zack Snyder envisioned, not the one that, ja that Joss Whedon had created. The Snyder Cut did not exist, or at least there was no evidence that it existed at all at that time. Or did it? Well, nobody knows. So what we know now is that there was indeed something, something that was called the Snyder Cut. But no one knew what it even was at the time. This, this petition came out of nowhere. It was fans. It was memed into existence. Th this is why I'm saying it's so dramatic. And it gets even more dramatic. I, I can't even begin to tell you how wild this shit gets. We're only in the windup. The Snyder Cut apparently did actually exist, though no one officially knew about it. And the Snyder Cut was a incredibly, incredibly rough version of the, uh, of the film that didn't have any CGI applied to it, that hadn't had, like, nothing. So, like, if you were to see Batman, he'd be in, like, a green suit with green background, all this kind of stuff. And it was basically just an in-process version of the film so they could start to figure out what everything was. There was no CGI involved in this. This was just 
the basic idea. It was, yeah, it was rough shots and test footage. And it had been constructed into a, a, a little bit of a narrative, but not there. It wasn't there. It wasn't even done at all. And, of course, the fans latched onto this and believed, no, they're holding from us the Snyder Cut. Now, of course, this is where we start to touch into some of the politics stuff. Yeah, green Batman, exactly. Yeah, you get your uh, you get your Aquaman standing on a green box instead of riding on a wave. You get your Aquaman holding a um, you know, a pink pole with a green ba ball at the end instead of his Poseidon's Poseidon's trident or whatever. Um, yeah, very very rough um film. Like super super yeah, being gr lifted up by green suited staff. That kind of stuff. Very silly, completely incomplete version of the film. But the fans were convinced that this was real, and it resulted in DC taking action. Because they're going to release the Snyder Cut. The Snyder Cut, they've made a real thing. They are basically remaking the movie. And it has led to, like, not only were there incredible amounts of reshoots in the first place, but now they're going to be launching the Snyder Cut as a four-part streamed miniseries on HBO Max, I believe, is the one that it's going to be on, if I'm not mistaken. Apologies if I got the name wrong. Four episodes, each an hour long, that are supposedly based on the original Snyder Cut, which didn't actually exist. So... Oh, Lawboy, we aren't even done yet. We aren't even done yet. Apologies. We're not even close to done yet. Excuse me. Because amidst all of this madness, again, I remind you, there was a, a potential merger going through. And many of these people believed they were going to make a lot of money off of this merger. But the merger ran into some legal troubles, and and it's been ongoing. It's been ongoing and a total mess. And this is where the drama that's happening right now begins, okay? This year, we're going to travel, well, not this year, last year, 2020. We're going to travel a little bit back in time, okay? And I'm going to show you something that happened, okay? Because this is where it gets real spicy. So, first off. Let me show you this person right here, okay? This is Ray Fisher. He's an actor. Uh, he it has been a fan favorite. And he plays Cyborg in the DC Universe. Ray Fisher. Yep. A lot of people like him. He's very, very popular, okay? Um, really good. This is what Ray Fisher looks like, okay? And he also, in the movie, he plays this character right here. Cyborg. See Cyborg? Yeah. He looks kind of looks kind of like a good cyborg, right? Sorry, my my throat's a little sore from talking so much. Um, don't worry, it's not the it's not the COVID. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, so those are the people that that this is who we're talking about here. This is who we're talking about. Yeah, I did the did the old dab the the old dab cough. Okay, I'm gonna just show you something because we have some tweets to go over. All right. This is the first tweet that started it all, okay? Joss Whedon's onset treatment of the cast and crew of Justice League was gross, abusive, unprofessional, and completely unacceptable. He was enabled in many ways by Jeff Johns and John Berg. Accountability over entertainment. Now, as you can see, this got a lot of attention. But this got next to nothing of attention in comparison to the DC Universe. This tweet came out in the morning of July 1st, 2020. And you might be going, wow, this is a huge allegation with some big names by, the lead, by, by a leading actor that people love. And you might be wondering, well, you know, what happened? How did this, how did this not go noticed? Yeah, well, a lot of people spell it that way. And something very strange happened. On this day, something else was launched. Okay? On this day was the launch 
of this article. Jason Momoa, you see Jason Momoa, he's the actor who plays Aquaman, in talks to voice Frosty the Snowman in the Warner Bros. movie. Now, for, for those of you who don't know anything about uh, Jason Momoa, let me just show you Jason Momoa. Oh, Jason Momoa is hella based. As far as actors go, hella based. Hella based. Let me just show you real quick what we got on, on display here, okay? All right? Look, listen. I'm sorry, but even I, I'm not super, super attracted to mask, mask bodies, usually. But oh my god. Oh my god. Are we talking about a very, very, very attractive and popular man? Hello, the serfs. Good to see you. Good to see you, serfs. Welcome. Let's get some pogs for the surf, the serfs in chat. Yeah, Jason Momoa is a hot man, okay? Like, my God. Not only, I mean, and these are his tattoos for the movies and stuff, but goodness gracious, okay? So you can imagine that even if it's a movie of Frosty the Snowman, that an announcement of Jason Momoa being in a movie is going to make people go, wow. Here's another video, by the way. Let me just, uh, or here's another image, by the way, to just, just to show you um, some other images that aren't as, uh, as, sex, as sexed up. This is Jason Momoa as he usually dresses. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Hot, hot, frosty, the snowman. Yeah. So that movie, the frosty, the snowman movie was announced on the same day that these allegations came out, unfortunately, right? It sucks if you make allegations against the people at DC Warner Brothers Movie Studios, you're, it's gonna suck. Did he, uh, did he do something like came out to support trans people? No, he, you'll see, we'll get there, don't worry. Um, I think Jason Momoa is Hawaiian. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure, um, but that's neither here nor there right now, okay? So, Jason Momoa was announced as starring in the Frosty the Snowman movie by Warner Brothers, which was going to be a live-action CG hybrid Frosty the Snowman movie. Pretty weird. Um, pretty goddamn weird. Um, so, what an unfortunate thing, right? What an unfortunate thing that you make these allegations, and that same day, a new movie with a beloved star, an A-lister, gets announced, and nobody sees this because they're all freaking out about the Frosty the Snowman movie. Really sucks, right? So this got buried. Nobody really noticed this. For now. But there's more, of course. We're not there yet. We're not even close to done yet. Here's what happened next, okay? In August... Of 2020, this tweet was made. During the LA reshoots for Justice League, Jeff John summoned me to his office to belittle and admonish me and my agent's attempts to take grievances up the proper chain of command. He then made a thinly veiled threat to my career. This behavior cannot continue. Accountability over entertainment. That's what this means. A over E. Accountability over entertainment. And this was in August, so nearly a month later. Yeah, Ray Fisher calling him out. Calling him the fuck out. But again, as you can see, as far as DC Universe goes, not a whole lot of attention. Damn. Only 100k quote tweets, 4,000 retweets. That's a, that's a good amount for our spaces. But in Hollywood, that's nothing. And this is over, this is the total since August of 2020. This has been out forever. Really weird. Really fucking weird. And it keeps going. So. Later in August. This article was published. Which we're going to take a quick look into. Okay. So join me for this uh, this look into this, this, uh, this article. And we're going to watch a little video here. Because it's getting really important. No, no. Wait, just, just, just Tib. You'll find out. Ready? Ray Fisher disputes Justice League investigation claims made by Warner Bros. Now, this is weird. Look at this. Updated on September 6th. Updated on September 5th. Originally published uh, at the beginning of September. 
so you can see wow damn there's been a lot of rapid there's like two two separate updates to this article yeah wild a lot of changes to this article so the original article is discussing right here on august 20 variety reported that the justice league investigation was underway meaning the alleged meeting between fisher and the investigator would have taken place less than a week later so the warner brothers was claiming that they were going to investigate all this bad shit that's been alleged um at jeff johns joss whedon and uh oh god i forgot his name damn it i'm blanking on the other guy's name uh jeff johns joss whedon and the other guy the the other guy fuck it i can't uh john berg john berg that's the one john berg okay sorry i forgot the name for a second thank you gay fest john berg by the way i have images of these people so that we can get them in our minds okay so we can keep everybody straight because i know this is a lot of stuff okay so this real quick hold on let me get their let me get their their visuals up real quick here we go this is john berg right here this guy right here is john berg then we have jeff johns right here this is jeff johns now this guy is really important to remember okay no, you didn't miss it yet, Silent. You are all good. Don't you worry. This guy is important to remember, okay? This guy is a big wig. It's just, well, no, it's we're about halfway into it, Silent. Um, this is Jeff Johns. This guy is important to remember. Big wig at DC, okay? He's forgettable looking, but you got to remember him, okay? He had a big part of it. And, of course, we have Joss Whedon. Okay, let me show you Joss Whedon, all right? You all know what Joss Whedon looks like, okay? This is Joss Whedon. This is Joss Whedon, okay? Here you go. Yeah. Yeah, Jeff Johns is well-known to comic fans. He worked on DC shit for a long time, okay? But there's another person that you should become familiar with real quick, okay? I know I'm giving you a lot of names. I know I'm giving you a lot of faces. But I'm going to show you one other person to become aware, aware of, okay? And that is Walter Hamada, okay? Walter Hamada, this guy right here. See, here he is hanging out with uh, Jason Momoa. We got Walter Hamada. Yeah, Walter Hamada. Now, Walter Hamada is a really, really important person. You see, he is in charge uh, of DC Films. He is the president of of DC films so big wig yeah Walter Hamada is the big wig he's the big guy DC films the president of DC films remember that okay now back to the article where we can now that we've got all the faces in in, in everybody's minds let's talk about this okay why is he standing next to that handsome looking mountain good question good question on Friday night, Warner Bros. responded to a claim from Ray Fisher, Cyborg, made on Twitter, specifically regarding the conduct of top executive at their DC films and the efficiency of their infer internal investigation. The Warner Media-owned shop flatly denied Fisher's claims that DC Films chief Walter Hamada had attempted to play filmmakers off of one another to assuage the actor's problems with the representation of his character, Cyborg, who fights along Batman, Wonder Woman, and others. More so, the studios say that Fisher has not cooperated with the investigation they launched at his behest. So what we saw on Twitter was them elect was ray fisher saying hey this investigation isn't doing shit no you guys aren't investigating anything we told you that we were threatened by these people who had a lot of money to make off the merger that's what he said and here we have from the man himself right here let me just get this one yeah go for it go for it silent let me just get you the timestamp on this one real quick because we're going to watch this together okay one moment here. Oh, here we go. Uh, let me let me let me grab this real quick, okay? One second. This is the one. 
Yeah, here we go. This is what I needed to do first. Sorry, sorry, this one I have to show first. As you can see, this is a lot of, we've done a lot of research on this. Okay. After five weeks of interviews with various cast and crew, Warner Media has officially launched an independent third-party investigation to get to the heart of the toxic and abusive work environment created during Justice League reshoots. This is a massive step forward. I believe this investigation will show that Jeff Johns, Joss Whedon, John Berg, and others grossly abused their power during the uncertainty of AT&T's merger with Time Warner. Thank you, Warner Media and AT&T, for making strides to ensure a safer workplace for all. So this was when they announced their investigation. You can see Ray Fisher is very hopeful and happy about this. Yeah, he's like, oh, sick, this is great. We're going to actually see our claims looked into. And as you can imagine... That didn't exactly happen. So, sorry, I, got, I, I, I wanted to make sure that I was showing all of the tweets that are necessary to be shown here, okay? Because there's a lot of it. This gets real messy, okay? So you can better understand how deep this goes. After speaking out about Justice League, I received a phone call from the president of DC Films. Uh-oh, we have a bit of lag? Oh, let's give it a moment. Is the stream, stream's not down, is it? Uh-oh. Uh oh. Hold on. Okay, I think we're back. Oh, boy. Wow, we just lost a lot of people. Fuck. Wow, a lot of people just turn off that quick, huh? We back. We back. Don't know what happened. That was on YouTube side. That was on YouTube side. That was on YouTube side. Okay? That was on YouTube side. No, I don't have AT&T. I have Time Warner. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, I do, but listen. Uh, yeah, listen. It's YouTube. It was YouTube. No errors on my end, okay? Everybody get the fuck back in here. Jesus. Jesus Christ, okay? All right, everybody. Here we go. Let's resume. Okay, everybody back? We all good? Here we go. So you can better understand how deep this goes. After speaking out about Justice League, I received a phone call from the president of DC Films wherein he attempted to throw Joss Whedon and John Berg under the bus in hopes that I would relent on Jeff Johns. I will not. Definitely, it was, it was definitely that one. Listen, okay? The telecoms are trying to bury me. They're trying to get me for telling the truth. Okay, but that might be truer than you might think, okay? So, what? let me just decode this for you. Jeff Johns is the DC Comics big boy, yeah? Walter Hamada threatened or, or called Ray Fisher and threatened to, to uh, basically fire Joss Whedon and John Berg as long as Ray Fisher would stop talking about Jeff Johns, the big DC boy. See? See how weird this is getting? See how weird it's getting? The president of DC Films was trying to cover for the DC big boy and was willing to throw Joss Whedon and John Berg, who are both assholes, under the bus as long as Ray Fisher stopped talking about Jeff Johns. Very weird. Very, very weird. Okay? So, yeah, it's real strange. And now he said he will not, he will not uh, relent. Okay? So, then we have this video, which we're going to watch here for just a, in just a second. Let me just grab the timestamp. Uh-oh. Did I lose my timestamp? Oh, shit. Hold on. Where's my timestamp? Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is the article. So, in July, here we go. Let me find this one real quick here. I just got to find the right spot because this is like, this article has been uh, redone like four times. So, it becomes very difficult to track some of this shit. Yeah, see, this is the article that has been changed. Originally, it talked about in July, 
Ray Fisher's representatives asked DC Films President Walter Hamada to talk to Mr. Fisher about his concerns. The two had previously spoken when Mr. Hamada act asked him to reprise his role as Cyborg in Warner Bros., the upcoming Flash movie, together with other members of the Justice League. In their July conversation, Mr. Fisher recounted disagreements he'd had with the film's creative team and complained that his suggested script revisions were not adopted. Mr. Hamada explained that the creative differences are a normal part of the production process and the film's writer and director ultimately get to be in charge. Notably, Mr. Hamada also told Mr. Fisher that he would elevate his concerns so they could conduct an investigation. At no time, according to WB, did Mr. Hamada Mata ever throw anyone under the bus, as Mr. Fisher has falsely claimed, or render any judgments about the Justice League production, which Mr. Hamada had no involvement, since filming occurred before Mr. Hamada was elevated to his current position. But we know that's not completely true. We know that's not completely true, that he has nothing to gain from it. He does. Still not satisfied, Mr. Fisher insisted that Warner Bros. hire an independent third-party investigator. This investigator has attempted to meet with Mr. Fisher multiple times, but Mr. Fisher has declined to speak to the investigator. Warner Bros. remains committed to accountability and to the well-being of every cast and crew member. It also remains committed to investigating any credible allegations of misconduct, which thus far Mr. Fisher has failed to provide. I know, that's their official corporate statement. S sounds a little strange, right? They're saying, oh, you have no evidence whatsoever. Well, it was enough to start an investigation, but they would do an in internal investigation. And then they're saying, oh, yeah, our third-party investigator won't contact. Well, guess what? Fisher has a response to this. Yeah, Fisher's got a response to this. Here we go. First, it was on Twitter and then on Instagram. So we're going to watch the Instagram one, but first we're going to take a look at this little Twitter together. Okay? Take a look at this. Thank you for all the support and for seeing through w Picture, WB Pictures' desperate and scattershot attempt to discredit me and continue protecting those in power. I met with Investigator via Zoom on August 26th. Below is an email I sent to my team and to the Screen Actors Guild immediately afterward. Here's the email. He's got the receipts. Ray Fisher coming in with the receipts. Bam! Hey, crew, just got off the line with the investigator. Had to end the interview early before going into detail. He's definitely been put on the case by Warner Bro Pictures and not Warner Media. His findings will go directly and solely to Warner Bro Pictures Legal. He also had another person on the line as a witness, which we weren't made, made aware of. I told him I needed to have a rep on the line as security for myself. He tried to keep me on the line, but I told him I would need to consult my team before proceeding. Can we jump on a call and discuss this soon? Best, Ray. It's also worth noting that I made it clear to the world on August 21st that I would be vetting the investigator to ensure a fair and protected process for all witnesses. WB has escalated this to an entirely different level, but I am ready to meet the challenges. So, yeah, those are some receipts. That is some serious receipts. Not only did he have evidence there was someone else on the line, that they were being incredibly dishonest, but also proved that WB was lying. Holy shit. Absolutely lying. Oh, wow. So here we go. Now, I got a little video for us to watch of the man himself, okay? Here we go. We're going to watch this together because I think this is a good one to watch. Here we go. Let's get into it. Uh, but what they had neglected to mention is that after my conversation with Walter Hamada, wherein... I demanded of Walter that we be able to take this to whatever next step needed to be taken because in the article they made it seem as if he bestowed this gracious request upon me to take it to the next level. Not at all. Not at all. After finally pinning him down and saying, would you be willing to, to, to support an investigation into what I'm relaying? And he and I had great talked in great detail about Joss Whedon. We talked in great detail about Jeff Johns. We talked in great detail about John Berg and his excuse for the situation with Jeff Johns was, well, Ray, I worked with Jeff on Shazam. I don't really think that he would do that sort of stuff or be that sort. And I go, hear that? He's saying, he's saying, oh, I worked with this guy on other DC products. Oh, okay. Um, don't worry. I'll check it out later, Gina. I got to do this. All right. 
So, Walter, you weren't there. I'm telling you, you weren't. You were not there when the man used back channel communication to call me into his office and made the veiled threat to my career. You weren't there for that. I said you weren't there when Jeff Johns contacted me in 2018, a year and a half after Justice League, while I was shooting True Detective to gloat, using back channel communications to gloat that there'd be another cyborg being used in the DC universe. So let me explain this. Not only, not only did Walter Hamada try to throw his own guys under the bus except for his friend who he worked with on other films he also taunted in back channels where he couldn't be caught he taunted ray fisher saying we're going to recast cyborg fuck you yeah you're not going to be cyborg anymore because you reported on our shitty people being abusive to you we're going to get you off the film holy shit but there's more in the show that he was producing. There's more. I said, Walter, you weren't there for those things. So you can't tell me about it. And so, finally, when we got to the heart of all that stuff, and I realized that clearly this is a situation wherein uh, Walter was attempting to protect Jeff Johns because of his continued business partnerships, such as Wonder Woman 1984, such as whatever other project. Does that film sound familiar? Does that sound familiar? Film uh, Wonder Woman 1984? Hmm. Damn. Now this is them talking earlier on. So they may have coming down the pipeline. I ended up saying, listen, this is just what I need. And so when he wanted more specifics about what was said and who said it, I refused to give him such specifics. I said, Walter, this is sensitive information. I said, the people that have stories to tell need to be protected. And so he did not escalate the situation in Warner Media. I received a phone call from uh, the head of HR, the vice president of HR. And the so now you can hear, instead of actually elevating it like they claimed they did, they didn't. They took it to HR to try and find a way to get rid of Ray Fisher. Vice president of labor relations from Warner Brothers. I had a two hour initial conversation with them where I detailed beat for beat, gave them names of people that they should interview. Uh, all of these things and so you know the fact is I've got so many details that I can put to these stories and I'm willing to do it face to face all right so when having to combat that with generalized statements I uh, generalized uh, press releases it's an impossible task for them to do and so since they've opened up the can of worms there are going to be certain things that I'm now going to be saying publicly not about the specific experiences in Justice League, but in how the things have been handled up until this point since I've come out with my allegations about Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns Johnberg. And if you remember, I had left uh, in quotation marks and others. And there was a very specific reason why I put and others in quotation marks when I mentioned the Warner Brothers, uh -oh. uh, the Warner Media rather uh -oh. investigation. So you guys, I appreciate the love and I appreciate the support. I'm not gonna stop fighting. Uh, I've had so many people reach out to me, both, both personally and people who, I, people who I don't know, professionals in the industry who've reached out and said, I know you're telling the truth. I know you're telling the truth because they know the people that we're dealing with. So there you go. Now he talks about some other things here, but that was the most important part of this particular video. So as you can see, uh, oh my God, oh my God. Is it getting wild? Now, remember, this was in September. What time is it? What date is it? Oh my God, it's halfway through January 2021 now. How could there possibly be more? Oh, there is more. And it's about to get fucking wild, okay? Are you ready for it to get fucking wild? All right, in chat. Oh, oh, by the way, just so you all know, I did not do this research alone. This research, I literally hired Silent, our wonderful mod, to help me with the research. So give a little bit of huggers to Silent or poggers or whatever you want to to Silent. Because, yeah, although I did lots of research too, 
Hey, Lonnie, good to see you. I hope you're having fun. It's about to get fucking wild. This is where it gets totally off the wall, okay? This is where it goes wild, okay? Yeah, Silent is going to love this shit. I know. Silent helped a ton. Like, I literally hired Silent to help me with this because I knew that I needed to do this, okay? All right. So, ready? Here we go. This is where it gets really fucking wild. All right, everybody, listen up. This is Jason Momoa's official Instagram account, okay? So you can see we got Jason Momoa over over there. You got Jason Momoa hanging out with Ray Fisher. They're clearly, you know, seem to be good friends. But what Jason Momoa drops is the wildest shit yet. This shit has to stop and needs to be looked at at Ray Fisher and everyone else who experienced it, experienced what happened under the watch of WB Pictures needs proper investigation. I just think it's fucked up that people released a fake frosty announcement without my permission to try and distract from Ray Fisher speaking up about the shitty way we were treated on the Justice League reshoots. Serious stuff went down. It needs to be investigated and people need to be held accountable. I stand with Ray Fisher. Aloha, Jason. So, back here, this original tweet that we've noticed got nothing, got no attention, was because Warner Brothers recognized this would be a shitstorm, and they made a fake announcement for a movie that does not exist and is never going to be made, and they put Jason Momoa in it because they knew that an A-list actor would get way more attention than a side actor, even if they're a well-liked side actor, named Ray Fisher. Allegedly. Allegedly they did this. Now remember, all of this is drama mama, so it's all with a big dose of allegedly. But holy fucking shit. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the depravity to use Frosty the Snow, of course, Frosty the Snowman. What the fuck? Wait, what's Frosty? Do we not know Frosty the Snowman? You know, Frosty the Snowman with Jason Momoa, a movie that doesn't exist, never apparently existed, and was not released with Jason Momoa's per permission? Wild. Did I not tell you that this was the most mind-bending, blowing drama that I've ever done on Drama Mama? Did I not tell you? Holy shit. A fake CGI live action Frosty the Snowman starring Jason Momoa was spun up seemingly specifically to distract from the shitstorm that was brewing under all of everyone's noses that was harming the actors who put in all this work. Isn't that wild? No, Frosty the Snowman has just disappeared as it turns out. Now they're probably gonna have to make it now to make it seem like it was always there. But Jason Momoa says he was never even talked about for the movie. So even if the movie ends up being real, Jason Momoa was never talked about being in it. He was never consulted. He was never asked if for a press release on this. It just came out just in time to bring everyone's attention off of Ray Fisher's allegations and onto something else to be excited about weaponized hype weaponized hype i've done a bamboozle no see well maybe i have bamboozled you all yeah i mean and that's the thing though good faith actor right they could make a whole movie just as a distraction because when you're talking about the billions and billions of dollars involved in this what is a shitty movie, a shitty throwaway movie? You spend a couple million making a shitty throwaway movie. If it saves you, if it somehow saves you millions more, well, then it was worth it, wasn't it? That's the weird thing about all this capitalism bullshit, right? Is that it's all about the money, all these cynical actions, all of the humans being crushed under this. It's not about art. It's not about comic books. It's not about fans. It's about motherfucking cash cold hard cash isn't that wild isn't that fucking wild weaponized hype
to try and save themselves from a shitstorm that was happening and that they knew about. By all, all that we can tell, they did know about it. Now, of course, allegedly, allegedly, but as far as we can tell, and according to the words of the people working on that project, they knew about it. But guess what? It's not over yet. It ain't over yet. I, I'm sorry. You thought that it ended with Frosty the Snowman? No, no, it didn't end yet. It did not end. There's fucking more. The following was relayed to me on behalf of Warner Media at 5 p.m. EST today. This was December, approximately one month ago. One month ago, last month. Wow. The investigation of Justice League is now complete. It has led to remedial action, some we've seen and some that is still to come. And this statement, which truly belongs to all who participated in the investigation, Warner Media appreciates you having the courage to come forward and assist the company with creating an inclusive and equitable work environment for its employees and partners. There are still conversations that need to be had and resolutions that need to be found. Thank you for all of your support and encouragement on this journey. We are on, a way, on our way more soon. Accountability over entertainment. And then we see some support from the fans down here below. All right. So this is this was as of one month ago. Okay. That was as of one month ago. And a couple of little things happened in between that I think are important to take note of here. See, we're in a little lull. Everybody can catch their breath now before the real wild shit begins. Gal Gadot knows this year was rough. She hopes Wonder Woman 1984 will end it on a high note. Wonder Woman is breaking new ground. Da, 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 da. But what we're really looking for is her statements down here, which is, hold on, let me find it. I'll find it on the page. Here we go. Although she declined to elaborate further, Gal Gadot acknowledged she had her own experience, quote unquote, with the director, which was resolved to her satisfaction. I'm happy for Ray to go out and speak his truth, says Gadot. Gadot? Sorry, I almost said Gadot, Jesus. I was there. I wasn't there with the guys when they shot with Joss Whedon. I had my own experience with him, which wasn't the best one, but I took care of it there and when it happened. It took, I took it to the higher ups and they took care of it. But I'm happy for Ray to go up and say his truth. Now, that seems like a pretty state, uh, like a pretty safe, um, is it Gadot? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, whatever. Fact of the matter is, fact of the matter is that's a pretty safe statement you know what i mean you can see that clearly there were some bad experiences but they were resolved for her now we might be able to look into a couple of factors into this and i'm going to do my best here so why would the allegations of gal gadot be taken seriously but not them of ray fisher well, Gal Gadot, or Gadot, or whatever her name is, I'm sorry if I can't pronounce it correctly, I've been told three different pronunciations. Um, she is a lead actor in the Wonder Woman series, a.k.a. Biggie Money. Biggie, Biggie Money. So, Gadot, it's Gadot. Okay, I'm saying Gadot. I don't care, I'm saying Gadot from now on. No more. Gal Gadot is a, is a number one frontline line actress she's huge she's making them all their money so of course they're going to listen to her but they're going to crush cyborg under the rock or at least that's what it seems like isn't it but she made a statement about it and as we can tell from her even her very safe statement uh that damn it seems like there's a lot more going on. It seems like it is true what, what Ray Fisher said, which is that many, many people had a very bad experience with Joss Whedon, John Berg, and Walter Hamada, and, uh, and, Je and Jeff Johns. Seems like that would be what her statement seems to be granting credence to. Yeah? Yeah? It's Godot? Well, listen. Okay? No more name stuff. It's too distracting, okay? It's too distracting, all right? Listen, I got to focus. We got to talk about this. So, 
we also have um, confirmation from Gal Gadot, who played Wonder Woman, that she was interviewed as a part of the investigation, and she stated, I know that they've done a very thorough investigation, even by just how much time I spent with them. She added that she didn't know what the remedial action was that was taken that Ray Fisher talked about, and I'm curious to know what's going to be the outcome. That's all we got from her. That's all she was willing to say, okay? So, a few days later, we got another tweet from Ray Fisher, okay? Here we go. Here we go. His lies, oh, sorry. Walter Hamada is the most dangerous kind of enabler. His lies and WBPR's failed September 4th hit piece sought to undermine the very real issues of the Justice League. I will not participate in any production associated with him. Accountability over entertainment. Managing movie superheroes is about to get a lot more complicated. They're talking about this one. So he's fucking calling out big names now. He's had he's tired of this shit. Really tired of this shit. Now we are in 2021. Okay? 2021. I strongly suggest that the rap amend this article immediately. While I appreciate the reporter's undying desire to do WB Pictures and Walter Hamada's bidding, it is factually inaccurate. So, let's look at this article. Whoa, those are big words. Cyborg cameo written out of the Flash. Role played by Ray Fisher won't be re by Ray Fisher won't be recast. Actor said last week he will not participate in any production associated with DC Films president Walter Hamada. DC Films upcoming The Flash movie will no longer include a cameo by Cyborg in, uh, according to insiders with knowledge of the situation. That decision comes one week after actor Ray Fisher who played in the character in the Justice League was offered a cameo role in The Flash last June indicated that he will not participate in any production associated with DC Films president Walter Hamada. In addition, insiders said the role will not be recast. Fisher has had an ongoing beef ongoing beef hmm with Hamada, who is overseeing The Flash, as well as other Warner Bros. executives and producers involved over his treatment on the set of the Justice League. The actor tweeted on the 30th, Walter Hamada is the most dangerous kind of enabler, his lies, etc., etc. Fisher, in his only film role, look at that. They're trying to knock him down. They're trying to downplay him. This is manipulative, by the way. Yeah, they call it a beef. They're downplaying his role. Fisher, in his only film role, appeared as Cyborg in 2017's Justice League. His final appearance as Cyborg will be in the Justice League Cy Snyder Cut. And then they've added some corrections here, which we're about to talk about. I did not publicly step down from anything. If WB Pictures has made the decision to remove me from The Flash, rather than address in any way Walter Hamada's tampering with the Justice League investigation, that's on them. The idea of removing the role rather than recasting it is only being used to try to avoid public backlash. Think about that. They were willing to write him out of the film entirely so that it didn't look like they were just getting rid of him. They got rid of Cyborg entirely to try and cover it, allegedly. The WB Pictures PR team has struggled to regain control of the narrative ever since they failed to bury me and the Justice League investigation with their September 4th hit piece, which, unsurprisingly, was written by the same reporter. Uh-oh. Looks like WBPR might have a friendly reporter. The fact is, the Justice League investigation led to Warner Media and its affiliates parting ways with Joss Whedon. Yeah, remember? Jeff Johns will be following suit. Had Walter Hamada gotten his way, none of that would have been possible and the cycle of abuse would have continued. My team and I are still in deep conversation with Warner Media regarding all these matters and flash or no flash, we fully intend to see this through. I'll keep you all posted, but in the meantime, thank you for your continued support. A over E. Accountability over entertainment. Wow. We ain't done. Oh no. We ain't done yet. We ain't done yet. I told you this was drama. And drama 
just keeps on going. So look at this. Jeff Johns still working with Warner Media despite Ray Fisher's claims. The writer is leaving the studio. Exclusive. Writer producer Jeff Johns has multiple projects at Warner Media and remains working with the company despite a claim from actor Ray Fisher that Johns will be parting ways with M Warner Media following the company's investigation into Fisher's allegations of misconduct on the Justice League. Multiple sources confirmed a variety. According to Warner Media, more than 80 people were interviewed during the thorough investigation. Y'all get drama. Yeah. This was published on January 7th. So just if just just eight days ago what was the misconduct a uh, severe verbal abuse threatening of um of actors um there was there is potentially um behind the closed doors some some sexual allegations also guess what the worst one is that uh, Ray Fisher said that Jeff Johns was openly racist on mul multiple times on set, and other actors have corroborated this. As in, we're talking probably like N-bombs type of racist. Multiple actors have corroborated this story. Of course, it's alleged, but multiple actors have said this. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the guy who Walter Hamada... This guy right here, Jeff Johns, was protected by Walter Hamada because him and Walter Hamada have tons of business deals. So we had a response to this article by Ray Fisher, and we're going to give some attention to that. Sir, you understand full well the difference between will be following suit and has followed suit. While I found the recent Leonard Roberts piece you helped create to be insightful and important, this purposely misleading variety headline and article is everything but. So, this is the article we were just looking at. Rafe, wait, not this one, sorry. I, I closed it. The, this one right here. Jeff John's still working with Warner Media. And it's really, really weird because it's like, oh, what is this person actually claiming? They're claiming, they're this article is saying, basically trying to claim that Ray Fisher was wrong about what he was saying. But that's not at least what I think Ray Fisher was actually saying. Whoops, that's not the right one. What Ray Fisher was actually saying, if we look at that original tweet, if we look at that original tweet, which I'll bring up here in just a moment, we have a completely different statement than what seems to be being responded to by the article. Which is, here you go. I did not publicly step down. And then down here, he, clay, he says, the fact is Justice League investigation led to Warner Media and its affiliates parting ways with Joss Whedon. Jeff Johns will be following suit. See, to me, this is him saying, I am going to keep pushing until Jeff Johns is gone because his issue was with Jeff Johns mostly. So they then report, you know, this one reports that Jeff Johns is still working despite Ray Fisher's claim. So it sounds like what they were trying to do in this article was frame Ray Fisher as some kind of, ooh, he just is saying bullshit all over the place. Whereas the actual tweet was saying, we're going to keep pushing until we fire, until Je Warner Media fires Jeff Johns. See? Do you see what's going on here? Real dirty, isn't it? That's real dirty, isn't it? Fucking weird. But guess what? There's more. On the 13th, we got another update to the situation. Yet another situation. And here we go. Here we go. I have this is from this is from Ray Fisher right here. I have con received official confirmation that Warner Bros Pictures has decided to remove me from the cast of The Flash. I strongly disagree with their decision, but it is one that is unsurprising. Despite the misconceptions, Cyborg's involvement in The Flash was much larger than a cameo. They even lied about that. They said they cut him from a cameo, but as it turns out, he was actually going to be a part of the movie, and they cut him out. And then they tried to say, oh, we just cut him out of a cameo. It was nothing, no big deal. No big deal. We weren't targeting him at all. We weren't targeting him at all. But now we have an official legal state, an official statement from Ray Fisher and his legal team that they weren't, it wasn't actually just a cameo. 
And while I do personally mourn the loss of opportunity to bring Victor Stone back to the screen, that's Cyborg, bringing awareness to the actions of Walter Hamada will prove to be a much more important co contribution to our world. On December 30th, 2020, I made it clear that I cannot, with a clear conscience, participate in any production associated with the current president of DC Films, Walter Hamada. And then, of course, he goes into his justifications. He talks about, he lays out the entire timeline that we've just gone through right here. And we get here. Despite Walter's best efforts, Justice League investigation was able to expose the racist, coercive, discriminatory, and retaliatory behavior of Jeff Johns during his tenure with Warner Bros. It has also led to the immediate parting of ways between Warner Media and J Joss Whedon. While it may be legally and financially safer to quietly phase Jeff Johns out or to let Joss Whedon exit on his own accord, I share neither of those responsibilities. My responsibilities are and have always been to try and protect those that were brave enough to lend their voice to the Justice League investigation, to use what little power I possess to ensure that the workplace behavior exhibited during the Justice League reshoots never happens again. No one in any profession should have to argue with their employer for their claims of abuse, racism, discrimination to be taken up the proper chain of command. And no one in any position of leadership should attempt to dissuade those wishing to report such claims from doing so. Walter's actions have transformed this narrative from an investigation of onset misconduct in 2017 to the examination of the present-day cover-up culture of Hollywood. His contribution to Warner Bros. Pictures' September 4th statement to the rap was false, cowardly, and reckless. I maintain that Walter Hamada is unfit for a position of leadership, and I am willing at any point to submit to a polygraph test to support my claims. I don't know how many instances of workplace abuse Walter has attempted to cover up in the past, but hopefully the Justice League investigation will be the last. And if the end of my time as cyborg is the cost for helping to bring awareness and accountability to Walter Hamada's action, I will pay it gladly. Onward, gratefully, Ray. Accountability over entertainment. And he ends this with a quote. And I'm going to read you this quote. You reach a point in life where you simply must take a stand. Marnie Till Mobley. Now, you might be wondering, who is Marnie Till Mobley? That is the mother of Emmett Till. You know that name? You know the name Emmett Till? Anybody familiar with Emmett Till? Yup. That was a quote from the mother of Emmett Till. Emmett Till was a boy who was lynched after being falsely accused of sexual impropriety towards a rich white woman. He was killed by a hate mob of KKK racists. And that quote that was used by Ray Fisher was from Emmett Till's mother talking about trying to get justice for the bullshit, the horrible atrocity that was uh, that was uh, left against, that was uh, meted out upon her son. Yeah, he was like a 14-year-old. He was a kid, literally. It was, it's so disgusting. And I want to do a whole stream just on Emmett Till, but just so you know, yeah, for allegedly whistling. Uh, so not only that, now keep in mind, the lady's story, um changed a million times but she claimed that he was like wolf whistling at her guess what as it turns out emmett till had a speech impediment and he would whistle to help catch his uh he would he would whistle in order to um to try and stabilize his bo voice because he would stutter and his mom taught him to take a break and whistle so that he could calm himself down yeah i don't uh, the photos are horrible yeah it's disgusting so yeah, it's 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 horrifying. Like the photos here that are in this article, it's like he was not only was he just not only was he just lynched, he was literally his body was desecrated. So that is who Ray Fisher is quoting. Yeah, the photos are not safe for light life. Yeah, I'll do a, a history mama, but I can't show the photos. They're TOS. They're completely TOS. Yeah, I, I'm not going to show them. They're in the Wikipedia article if you want to do it. 
we can't show them on stream, okay? That's who Ray Fisher quoted in his article. So you could imagine how big of a personal deal this is for Ray Fisher, okay? And now we have the latest. We are all caught up. As of the 14th, that's right, yesterday, the latest news. Ray Fisher, Warner Media offered dueling accounts of the Flash exit. Ray Fisher has confirmed that he's been removed from the cast of Warner Bros. The Flash and will not reprise his role as Cyborg in the comic book film. I strongly disagree with their decision, but that is one that is unsurprising. Fisher says at the beginning of a two-page post published Wednesday evening, Despite the misconception, Cyborg's involvement in The Flash was much larger than a cameo. We just read this statement. The news of Fisher's official departure from the next film in the DC Universe comes as part of an ongoing back and forth between the actor and the studio. After an investigation into Fisher's claims of on-set misconduct by Justice League co-writer Joss Whedon and enabling behavior by Jeff Johns, John Berg, and Walter Hamada, of course. They forgot that. Throughout the investigation and since, Fisher has consistently spoken out about his claims via social media. And in his latest post, Fisher reiterated claims of misconduct by Johns, and he accused Hamada of protecting Johns and Whedon by hampering the studio's investigation into his allegations. While Hamada was not in charge of DC Films during the production of Justice League, he took over of, uh, as head in January 2018, two months after Justice League bombed the box office. However, Fisher says Hamada has failed to take his claims that the Whedon-led reshoots of the film were rife with mistreatment. Whedon assumed the director's chair after original filmmaker Zack Snyder departed due to the death of his daughter. And Sarnoff, chair and CEO of Warner Media Studios and Networks Group, defended Hamada. Ah, uh-oh. I believe in Walter Hamada and that he did not impede or interfere in the investigation. Furthermore, I have full confidence in this investigation's process and blah, blah, blah. We have a whole bunch of corporate bullshit here. As has been previously stated, an extensive investigation was conducted by an outside law firm led by a former federal judge who was assured that Warner Media there was no impediments to the investigation. Fisher is not backing away and is willing to submit to a polygraph test. Though Fisher will not appear in The Flash, he has already completed work on the Justice League Snyder Cut, which is set for release on HBO Max in March. His role in the Snyder Cut is said to be much more substantial than in the theatrical version of the Justice League. By the way, which, um, which indicates that that article... That article that was saying, like, oh, it's his first appearance on film was especially in bad faith. Hey, thank you very much, Burnt Toast. And that concludes the investigation portion. Wow. Let me try that again. And that concludes the investigation portion of today's Drama Mama. And now we have to think about it and talk about the take. As always, at the end of a Drama Mama, I do my take. What's the takeaway? What have we learned? What have we figured out? Oh, well, thank you, Billy Max. I appreciate that. Yes, the investigative portion. Yeah, no, it's the investigation portion is what I meant to say. Executives are scummy. Fisher and Momoa are based. Does this mean we can't use the Snyder Cut as a joke anymore? Well, yeah, a little bit. I mean, the Snyder Cut is actually happening. As much of as much as it was memed into existence, as much as um, as much as there was like all kinds of memes about it and whatever, and it didn't really exist in any meaningful way. It's been memed into existence, and now will be a TV show, and we'll see what happens. And thankfully, Ray Fisher probably got will probably get some you know awareness from it. But can we just rethink on like so? Let's talk about what actually happened. Uh, allegedly, according to the actors actually involved in it, WB faked a Frosty the Snowman movie to distract from the fact that there was racism and r and unbelievable abuse during the pro the production of one of their most frontline movies, which failed mon massively. And since then, there has been constant retaliation. And we all know, right? Right? This is what it is, right? There's no way you can hide the fact that writing him out of the film, a film he was supposed to be a big part of, and then lying and saying it was just a cameo, is, is ridiculous. 
was probably the cheapest option to make a to to produce a fake film. The fake Frosty was was wild, wasn't it? Isn't that absurd? Holy shit! Now, before I give my take, I got to do one more little shill. You know, one more little plug. If you like this investigation, slap that subscribe button, slap the bell, give me a like, and join my Discord because that's where you'll know everything that I'm doing. And I do some good ass content, as you can see. So join the Discord. The Discord is easy to find discord.gg forward slash demon mama. It's that easy. And it's all on the screen right here. You can see it right there. Join the Discord. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's get to the take, right? Well, I got to say, from all of the evidence that I'm looking at here, I stand with Ray Fisher. I stand with Ray Fisher. What about all of you? I don't know. His story seems pretty much fucking locked tight. This guy's been willing to go through hell. And you know what? It's funny because all of the WB executives have a lot of money to make from this going quiet. They have a lot of money to make from that. And he doesn't. In fact, Ray Fisher has done nothing but lose. He's gained nothing from this. He has only gained the truth. And it looks like his fellow actors, besides Gal Gadot, who was willing, who got all of her problems taken care of because she's an A-lister, are willing to stand by his side. Even with Jason Momoa being willing to go on record exposing the fake Frosty film. Corporate cancel culture, that's the thing. At the end of the day, the real cancel culture has always been people with power wielding it to silence those who do not have power, who threaten their power. It always has been. Now, are there other times of cancel culture? Are there other examples? Yeah, but the one, I mean, we live in the era of Me Too, right? With with the Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. Do we all remember that? J.K. Rowley, right? Like, have we forgotten so quickly that for decades, Harvey Weinstein was literally sexually abusing like dozens of women trying to make a career and wielding that power to dominate an industry and make a fuckload of money? This is the most disgusting. Yeah, in fact, you know what? Listen, everybody. When this video goes live, I'm going to make an I stand with Ray Fisher tweet. And I would like it if we could all retweet that. I have, and I will be front, I will be open with you. That would benefit me. It would benefit me in that my tweet with the video in it would get out. But it would also benefit this because... When this video goes out, I'm hoping to get eyes on Ray Fisher's side of the story. And I'm only small, but I think that this is how we can get eyes on this stuff. So watch the Discord and listen, and I'll let you know. And we'll boost the shit out of that tweet. This has hu serious rich people problems vibes. These, these issues can be addressed by talking about broad systemic issues, emo. I mean... Yeah, but at the same time, these actors, these actors uh, suffered. Now, I mean, Ray Fisher is probably rich compared to me. Ray Fisher is probably rich compared to most of us. But Ray Fisher is not rich. He's a starting actor. He's a starting actor who's been horrifically abused and racistly abused. This is worthy of talking about. And this is something that is one of the most popular film series in the world right now. Yeah, Vosh is... Wait, really? Is that true? Ray Fisher's net work is, worth is calculated at 500k? That's like nothing. For an actor? That 
and he's taking on WB. Do you want to know how valuable WB is? Let's take a look. Let's just get this down, and I'll tell you what we're talking about as far as squaring off. WV, net value. Let's see. Let me find it here. Hold on. Hold on. Let's take a look. Five billion. Warner Brothers Media. Wait, that doesn't even that doesn't even seem that seems like it's too small. That's probably only the film division. Hold on. Let's look here. Their revenue, their revenue last in 2017, their revenue was thirteen point eight six billion dollars in one year. That was in 2017. They made thirteen point eight six billion. Ray Fisher is has a total holdings of five hundred thousand. This is a David and Goliath situation. Oh, okay. Please send that to me, Retcon. Uh, can you send it to me on Discord? Can you send it to me on uh, Discord? AT&T is now... Oh, yeah. AT&T is now the parent company. Uh, AT&T is now the parent company. Yeah, 26,000 times. Holy shit. Yep, here you go. He's worth half a million. Going up against a company... That's worth 26,000 times his value. At least David had a slingshot. Yeah, this is why this is important. This is the systemic issues we're talking about. This is representative of how money and power is wielded against workers. All right, let's take a look here. What we got? Oh, yes. Yes. Yep. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second here. Why focus why focus on individual cases when we can stop all of this by fixing the overarching problem? What? Human being? Human being? My goodness, what? You have to talk about individual issues. How do you think you learn about the overarching problems? What do you want me to do? Just go capitalism bad? And then everybody's supposed to know exactly how capitalism is bad? We have to study these specific examples. No, human being. With all due respect, no. I love you, but no, in a communal way, not a parasocial way. That's ridiculous. We have to do, listen, we have to be willing, or not everybody, but me, I have to be willing to do research to help you understand these stories so that people know what the fuck goes on going into these products. Remember, accountability over entertainment? Yeah. Accountability over entertainment. If you squared Ray Fisher's money, you would still have less money than AT&T? Yup. Let's wrap this all up. All right. Let's wrap this all up by saying these massive, hyper-corporate, mega-capitalist studios are monstrous. And what they do is they take our favorite art and they crush it and they squeeze it for every single drop of blood they possibly can. And all of the people who make that art possible, all of the actors, the writers, the workers, and not even to mention the crew people who don't even have access to this level of a platform. How many crew people who don't have a Twitter account do you think suffered racism that will never be known about? animators cgi workers their blood is being squeezed out to enrich people like walter hamada to enrich people like joss whedon and jeff johns and and all of the investor the mask wearing smoky room investors at dc films this system kills art capitalism is destroying art the desire to turn everything into the most profitable film ever. Every film has to be that way. And it will be uh, uh, corporatized to fuck is destroying art as we know it. And it's destroying the people who make art. It chews them up and spits them out and leaves them for dead. And if you dare speak up against it, they will try to crush you. That is what we learn from this. 
That is the conclusion of the drama mama, is that I stand with Ray Fisher for whatever it's worth. And I hope that the imps will join me in standing with Ray Fisher too. Because Ray Fisher deserves some backup. 